bring us back to to short chain fatty acids for for a moment because these are widely spoken about. I think maybe a little bit misunderstood. But can you walk us through? So if I if I'm consuming some of those foods that you just said there, and we were to follow that food down into the large intestine, what's what's taking place um, in order for short chain fatty acids to be produced? And once they're produced, like what 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 function are they having locally in the gut and, and beyond the gut? Yeah. It's actually a really beautiful mechanism for how these interact these microbial produced compounds interact with our gut. So these certain groups, not all microbes, will see these fermentable fibers. They will ferment them and essentially as a byproduct, like just like we breathe you know, CO2 out, they'll breathe out a short chain fatty acid. And it could be butyrate, acetate, or propionate, different organisms. These organisms don't make all three all the time. Some of them will make one better than the other. Some will make the other. So you also then having that diversity of these organisms is important. So you get a nice proportion. Of the three, butyrate has been the most studied and been shown to have the most beneficial effects. And so what exactly is that? So We always talk about short-chain fatty acids promoting gut barrier. You know, we hear about leaky gut and things like that. This is the anti-leaky gut. So short-chain fatty acids, especially butyrate, will do that. So how do they do that? Essentially, the mitochondria in your colonocytes carry out beta-oxidation, and their primary primary fuel is butyrate. And as long as they are doing beta-oxidation, it's an oxidative process, so they're consuming oxygen from the colon. And that keeps the colon anaerobic. So the reason why there's no oxygen in there is because of the beta oxidation from in the colonocytes. And so if your colonocytes are happy and fueled and that process is normal, your bare, your, your tight junctions are maintained. If you have a disruption in then those short chain fatty acid back to whether it's diet or medications or something that disease inflammation will do that. When you say medications, mostly antibiotics or other medications? Um, There's been some studies where even things like chemotherapy, like they're very sensitive to certain medications that will just kind of suppress them. It may not eradicate them like antibiotics, but will suppress them so less is being produced. But that's a very like emerging area, which medications have, you know, these effects on the microbiome. And so if you now have a reduction in butyrate being produced, you start to, the, the colonocytes cannot carry out beta oxidation the same way. Oxygen isn't being consumed. So now the, the gut starts to become more aerobic. And then path, facultative anaerobes like harmful E. coli or salmonella can come in and colonize more effectively. So they can use different substrates, but most of our colonic bugs need a strict anaerobic environment. So as the environment changes, that ecosystem adapts. It adapts but unfavorably. Yeah, it's a maladaptation. Yeah. And so that cycle, if you don't correct it, will continue. And it will it may happen without you even knowing it for a while, yeah. like a slow burn, until you notice it, right? And then it, you have to figure out ways to bring it And so out. if I wanted to, and, and presumably no one wants to do this, I wanted to accelerate that. The things that I would do are take antibiotics, would eat an ultra processed diet yeah. that doesn't have max absolutely mac deficient diet right or five just fiber deficient diet but mac specifically antibiotics anything that leads to like if you have i study crohn's disease you know different types of chronic intestinal inflammation immune cell influx will create an environment that alters the gut microbiome so inflammation overtly will do that so you know, there is, it's a combination of things, but it's a high fat diet will suppress your butyrate producers. So inflammation can kind of kickstart that process. Yeah. But also, at least to my understanding, the production of short chain fatty acids in the first place has a direct influence on inflammation. Yeah. And this is an area that's been studied a lot in the early life microbiome, but it's true in later life too. But Butyrate stimulates these regulatory T cells, which are like your counteractive immune cells that are your good your good T cells. So if you have regulatory T cells, they're sort of surveilling and keeping your immune tone dampened. And so that is a, a direct influence from, from butyrate. Butyrate is like this magical, you know, byproduct. And so we want to support that as much, much as possible because its effects are pleiotropic. You know, they affect many things, gut barrier function, immune cell diversity, 
immune cell function, things like that. And that that relationship with the immune system is important for fighting off infection, mm -hmm. for lowering our, lowering our risk of allergies and yeah. kind of food intolerances and yep. chronic disease, all of those things. Yeah, especially in early life. And that's, and that's something that is a lot of the tension the field is going to, you know, when does everything start to go wrong? And what is the earliest point of intervention in, in human life? And is there a point of no return and that sort of thing? And so the early life window, that three year, first three years of life becomes a really interesting period to study. And we've learned a lot about how microbes influence not just your immune cell development, but just the physiology of the gut, um, your uh, intestinal hormone development, sort of physiological processes where if those microbes are not producing short-chain fatty acids, those things don't develop appropriately. And the extrapolation there has been increased autoimmune conditions uh, because your immune system and everything is not developing appropriately. Is the, the microbiome, would you say, is distinct and separate to, to our immune system or is it, is it just part of our immune system? It's distinct and separate. It's a completely different thing, but there's a reason why most of us who go into the microbiome field have to also end up studying immunology and understanding the immune system because in the end they they i mean our immune system evolved to detect and surveil microbes and infections and keep us from being you know getting septic that's really why we have a micro uh, an immune system in the first place so if you for people who want to understand the immune system, they can't ignore the role of the gut microbiome. And then for people who care about what does a microbiome do, they can't ignore the immune system. So it they go hand in hand, but they are they are distinct. On butyrate, is it possible to put butyrate into like an enteric coated capsule and there therefore ensure it gets down into the large intestine and that does have benefits and that way we could kind of shortcut the guessing around how do we get the right bacteria in there and just all supplement with butyrate? Yeah, I mean, people are doing that. People are creating these products. I mean, theoretically, yeah, you really just need butyrate to get to your colon. There was this really beautiful study from um, several years ago where they looked at the kinetics of oral butyrate supplementation. And they were comparing free, you know, free butyrate to a conjugated, like conjugated to inulin. And they definitely show free butyrate doesn't get anywhere near your colon. So that's not going to work. Um, if you conjugate it to something else, then it actually gets to the colon and you can actually see its rise and it's, it actually works. Now, just taking free butyrate and putting it into a pill, I mean, it's a... Theoretically, it can be done. I don't know that there's been any studies doing the same kinetic analysis of if you take the pill, here's my blood work, here's the rise, here's, you know, that it's getting to the right place. And you can do the math to show that it's actually in the colon versus the small intestine or the, right. or the stomach. And so I think people have taken conceptually, hey, if I put it in a pill, it should get there. But I've not seen any actual evidence that it is getting there. But theoretically, it should work. But even if we could do that, there are benefits to consuming the, the max outside of butyrate production as well. Exactly, because we don't exactly know how much butyrate you have to, what's the effective dose of this? I don't think any, anybody knows this at all. And so why guess? And, you know, it may be 20 pills. I don't know. And that's not going to, but we can eat fiber and that's, you know, you just keep, it's like keeping the powerhouse going versus having to put all this effort into taking pills. What about polyphenols? Are they are they similar to certain dietary fiber, prebiotic fiber, and resistant starch in that they can also kind of fuel the microbes that could produce short chain fatty acids, or are polyphenols different in terms of their prebiotic effect or potential prebiotic? Yeah, effect? they're different in their prebiotic effect. They wouldn't be considered a MAC. There definitely are studies looking at microbial metabolism of foods that are rich in polyphenols and essentially liberating those. So that's the other thing microbes can do. And, and this has been well studied in like Chinese medicine is that there's well-known herbs and things like that, that only become bioactive once the microbes transform them. And so you, 
it's a different it's a different spin on the short chain fatty acids, but you still need your microbes potentially to enhance the potency of certain things like polyphenols. And butyrate gets a lot of the airtime, but you mentioned acetate and and propionate. Yeah. Are they having a similar effect on tight junctions and gut lining and inflammation, or are they distinct to, to butyrate? Do we understand that? So it, that is well studied, and that that the nuances between acetate butyrate and propionate is not necessarily my wheelhouse but they do they do do different things propionate has been well studied for its satiety inducing effects so very different than the butyrate effects but it seems to have some effect on the gut brain axis people have actually tried like orally taking propionate but it's horrible like it's that's not going to be a viable route but it has some gut brain effect acetate i believe is actually the most abundant of the short chain fatty acids. Um, and it has very different effects in butyrate as well. It's been shown to be sometimes detrimental and sometimes beneficial. If you've been listening to me or some of my guests talk about the gut microbiome, you'll know that it thrives on very specific types of fiber and polyphenols and resistant starch, many of which the average person falls short on, despite the very best of intentions. That's why Dr. Will Bolsowitz and I founded 38 Terra a gut health company where science meets supplementation. An independently conducted 15-day m Shime study found that our first product, Daily Microbiome Nutrition, or DMN for short, significantly increased short-chain fatty acid production and encouraged the growth of beneficial microbes linked to better gut and metabolic health. It's a simple daily scoop that you can add to water or your smoothie. No sugar, no fillers, just clinically backed ingredients that make your gut bugs happy. So if you want to support your microbiome in a meaningful science-backed way, check out 38terra.com and use the code THEPROOF to save 20% off your first order. 